So I have the pleasure of having Boss Babe, Grammy Award winner, Super Mom in the house, <laughs> Angela Hunt, and my big sister. Certain people do know that like I go in the studio and I'm there all night to like sometimes four or five in the morning and my kids got to get up at six. <laughs> so it doesn't stop and I just keep going and I'm tired and I needed a break and I, I didn't want this type of break. I, you know, people's lives are in danger. Um, it's really crazy, um, especially mm -hmm. over here in America. But needless to say, whether you believe it or not, this was coming. So yeah. we have to deal with what we have, what what's going on, and we have to be resilient. We have to stay prayed up. We have to stay super strong and resilient. Like there's days yep. that I feel crazy, but I got a posse around me that keeps my head up. So I'm sure that people want to know about, you know, your journey. You have won a Grammy. You have written songs for multiple genres. Um, you know, you've just done a lot of really, really amazing things. So what was that journey like for you? I've been singing since I was three years old, but I actually fell into a video production company at a really young age. And in that company, I started as a casting director. I casted many, 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 many videos in the 90s. And then after casting for a while, I actually became a stylist and I styled many, many groups like Boys to Men and the list goes on and on. And <laughs> many to name. I, I was okay. born in Brooklyn um, and I was raised in Barataria and, and with my cousin and my grandmother. You know, I was like a lot of, you know, kids in Brooklyn, you know, if he wasn't acting right, you get sent back home. Yeah, right? no. so, <laughs> <sent> right back home. <laughs> you get sent right back home. Um, so I grew up in both places, um, which I'm very fortunate to have an upbringing, uh, upbringing in, um, in Trinidad because it was definitely grounding, walking up Malik Hill every day. Shout out to Crazy. Shout out to everybody in South <laughs> <laughs> How do you no think that really. growing up in Trinidad has influenced, you know, your life living abroad now? Um, it was everything. I mean, because, you know, when you, I, you know, a, like, lyrical can attest to this. Like, living in Brooklyn is like living in Trinidad. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't really that much different. That's you know? true. <laughs> the next door neighbor gonna beat you if you're outside acting crazy. Yeah. <laughs> eating, eating all the same food. You know, you're being raised almost the same way. But, I mean, once I landed into that concrete jungle into the city, then I really knew I was in New York. And I knew that I had to make something of myself. Like, I refused to become a product of my environment. Like, I could hang with everything that was going on. Everybody who was selling drugs, everybody who was doing drugs. But I refused to go down that road. I just knew that there was something different for me in life. And it was up to me to make that decision to go down a different path. Right. So you were casting videos and stuff when you were small, but where did that, where did you actually begin, you know, writing um, and actually singing um, professionally? I'm always, I always wrote. I, okay. I, I always wrote songs since I was, since I was young. I always did like fashion shows. I would sit on the front of my mother and I would sing her these songs that I wrote. Um, but I really didn't know I could really, really hone in on being a writer if it wasn't for this producer, singer, songwriter named Corey Rooney. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Corey Rooney. If, you know, a lot of people are not exposed to a lot of things um, in the music business because, you know, it's just a luck of the draw if you get to meet people and you get to be around certain people. But I was actually singing in a studio one day and he was actually in a room producing Mariah Carey. Now, Corey Rooney has a long history at Sony Records. He is responsible for J-Lo, for Mariah Carey. The hits are just too many to mention. And he heard me singing in a hallway. And he came out and he said, who's singing? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? He was like, no, it's you, it's you. There's nobody else in the hallway. <laughs> And I was like, no, I'm a rapper. Like, at the time, I, was, <laughs> I thought I was a rapper. I just knew who I was. And he told me, um, no, I know it was you. And he's like, did you write that? And I kind of confessed. And he kind of, that was my journey, turning into, like, a singer. Because prior to that, I was a rapper. So sure. where do you find your inspiration when it comes to writing music? Um, in the beginning, 
it would be my friends. Because if you look around you, everybody's going through like yeah, some crazy stuff. <laughs> and it was easy to just look at my friend who was getting cheated on and this one here who was <laughs> doing this and you know living in New York City there's you could you could never be short of inspiration and that's where I thought I was getting my inspiration from but then I realized it was it was way much more than that like you know I've said it before and I I'll continue to to believe it and continue to say it that I honestly feel like I'm just a messenger and I just be waiting for the beam to come down and it just jumps in me and the songs just come out because sometimes the songs come out and I'm like, where did that come from? Um, I was sitting in the studio and I was looking out of the window at 42nd Street and I was like, I'm not going to do another party done. I'm the type of person that when I do a song, that's it. I'm I'm not doing I'm not doing it again. Why? Yeah, you already yeah, did yeah. that. You're you right. know? So you're never let's create let's something think, else. Let's, let's do something else. The thing about songs is like when you do a song, you're never gonna be in that moment. You're never gonna be in that time space. You're never gonna feel that passion you were feeling at that moment. So you can't create that over again. Yeah. But you can go on to do something greater than that. And there was actually another song on the track. And I, I decided to do someone else's music. I had never done it before. And I said, let me let me try. And my engineer looked at me and stopped the music and said, you just need to do your own thing. And I said, okay. And I was like, one born of me. You couldn't have better time. You always answer when I call in holy. I know not how it seems all week. And out came the entire song. The <laughs> entire song. Like... All wow. the way down to the, I know that's all I'm doing. And I know make it want me. Oh, me, darling. Like, oh, I went back to do the holes. Never came out like the first take. You can't possibly think that that comes from you. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot. If you think that it's that comes from you. No, no, no. Yeah. That's not you. <laughs> that's not you. That, you just, you're just here and you're with your messenger and you're waiting for the beam to come down. And mm -hmm. that's it. That's how I feel about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, I can't really take all the credit for that. You, you work in a male-driven industry. Like, how do you deal with that pressure? I be a woman. I just <laughs> exactly. My sister said it. Trust in your in your gift. I do trust yeah. in my gift, and I don't try to be a man. I think some women go about it like just you know rough and they want to walk mm -hmm. in and they want to yell and scream and be all bitchy yeah. to say the least you know I think I'm just myself I can't be anything else but myself I don't want to overpower you I don't want to try to shake you what I am going to do is shoot the per first person that I see in that studio and they going down I never hold back I will always aim to kill mm -hmm. um because that's what we we'll do make our home. yeah that's that's what we do in songwriting you know what i'm saying it's like eat or be eaten as we say in general dog eat your supper yeah <laughs> and i want to survive so i think the way that i su i survived in a lot of studios where i would walk in like people uh, I started in rap music. So when you're sitting around Biggie and you're sitting around Pac and Puffy and all these dudes and you're the only female in the room and they're like, yo, Ange, write a hook. I'm like, all right. Yeah, I'm shaking in my boots. Yeah, but you got this. <laughs> but I I have to have this. Yeah. I can't. I, I can't. I don't gotta got this. Up. It's more. Yeah, yeah, it's more than that. It's like I have to have this because I have one shot to show that I belong in this room. And it's one thing, like I've taught a lot of master classes and the one thing I've always told the people who are in the classes were, you have to be yourself and you got one shot. The first shot can't be, <laughs> can't do that, <laughs> you know? And I think, you know, if you are ready and you're always ready, you're always gonna be able to strike and kill. Mm -hmm. I'm always ready. Um, yeah. and like, like it's just it's just a part of the generation that I was a part of we always had to be ready there was never ever such a thing as we can write this song tomorrow or no it was like you do it and you do it now and you, you kill it 
like you're and never going to And I think that's a mentality that people need to have. Like you really always need to be prepared because you have no idea who's going to knock on your door at what time. So you need to be ready. If this is, if you're passionate about something, you know, whether it be your business or your craft, you need to be 100% prepared that if tomorrow Obama walks and knocks on your door and said, hey, I need you for this, you're ready to go. Which, which happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't Obama, but it was Michelle Obama. She came in my room and I was just like, I wasn't ready for that one. But I was so, like, things of that nature. It's like, what do you say? What do you do? You have one opportunity to make an impression on someone. And let it be your best. And you are your best when you are yourself. When I see, like, to me, some of the hardest working artists in this world are soca artists. Mm -hmm. They get on the stage. They run around the stage for 45 minutes to an hour, maybe sometimes an hour and a half, two hours straight. No chaser. And with, with a crowd that's going more, 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 yeah. more, more, more. And they give everything they got. And they're not praised enough for that. And that's um, one of the things I, I admire so much about this genre and about this, you know, this music in particular. Um, it's how hard they work. Um, and they deserve so much more recognition for it. Let's touch on that. Let's talk about what are your thoughts on the industry and the business of the industry, you know, and the direction that we're heading, excuse me, right now? Well, I think, I think what's happened right now, this coronavirus has shaken up our industry because it was so many people who thought they were good and they just realized they ain't good. Right. Because if you were living, you know, from show to show and you weren't taking care of the music business aspect of your life, you're looking really scared right now. I'm pretty yeah, sure reality is hitting you in the face. Reality is hitting you in your face. And it's something, you know, I always tell people about, and I try to talk to people about copyrights, knowing your business. It's like, how are you going to learn this craft and be in love with this craft, but not know your contracts, your business, your royalties, yep. everything that comes along with it. People, you know, most people, you know, they just want to get up. They want to throw on their lips. They want to look good, throw on their clothes. But they don't want to... Put up a little Instagram post I'm outside. Of course. They, they, don't want to, they don't want to do the work. And then yeah. when something goes wrong, you're right. I am, Tanika says, no insurance, no benefits. Because we have no insurance. We have no benefits. We have no 401k. No security. no security whatsoever. And maybe a lot of people don't know that about this. And I was saying, yes, I was saying the same thing. It needs a whole overhaul. And I've tried so hard to tell people here in America, we have a pyramid, right, of business. And I'm protected by my societies. I'm protected by my publishers. I'm protected by my accountants, by my lawyers. But it is up to me to know what each of those people do. Correct. What, to understand what, what, where, where my money's coming from. I know where my dollar's coming from. And when I didn't know, I learned the hard way and I learned from a lot of mistakes. Um, I wanted to know about the Grammys and how it functioned. And so I went, I, I got a position on the Grammy board. Um, a lot of people didn't know that. And I was on there and I was just like, oh, well, this is what y'all do. <laughs> you know, um, so I think it's important. And I'm speaking to younger artists that, you know, there's so many things driven by social media and it's the saddest thing. And it's the one thing I'm trying to protect my children from like, this is not a reality. Mm -hmm. This is a whole made up world. Perception. It's, yeah. Everything is about perception online. Cause you, no one online is going to give you $20. Your neighbor mm -hmm. will, or your friend will, or the man down the street will. That's the reality. Your mother's real. Your sister's real. Your cousin is real. Yep. You know, that's real. Um, this here, this world that people get up in the morning and then it's right next to their bed and it's the first thing they do and they grab it. You know, I'm I'm thankful for, for Instagram or Facebook or Twitter for whatever to learn about people and where yeah. they're from and what they like. And I, I don't really care so much about what they have on or what they look exactly. like. Yeah. Or, it's just not a real life. This popularity thing is like, crazy like i never wanted to be popular 
I wanted to be a good writer. I wanted to go down mm -hmm. as one of the best writers in the world. And I will not stop until I achieve that goal. You, you, you don't need to have 500,000 You are your legacy. And, and, yeah. and what you aspire to be and what you do is what you will become. And what you put out is what you get out of life. We are all mm -hmm. responsible for the space that we live in. We have this space here on earth and this is your space. Like, I never care about the man behind me. I could not give two cares what the person is doing behind me. You know, I hear so many, like, people put all this competition, you know, about other artists next to you, and this one sounds like you. I don't know who sounds like me. I don't know who's doing what, because I don't care about who, who's You're behind. in your own lane. I'm here. Tunnel and I'm focused on going that way. And if more people stay focused on what they're doing and being kind to the person next to them, then we'd have better music. I went from studio to studio. I used to walk from Brooklyn to Manhattan. I used to not have no money to eat um, food. And I used to go in the garbage straight up, get food from the garbage in studios. Everybody's like, oh, Angie, you okay? How you getting home? I'm like, oh, I'm good. You know, I'm going to get in the cab. Knowing that I was going to walk home today you probably have no one that's never seen that type of hardship. Mm -hmm. The way they're getting on so quickly or doing the things that are so messed up to get on. Like, it's all about instant gratification, you know? That's, that's the problem. That's the reality of the that's situation. That's the instant gratification. I've told a lot of artists, I said, listen, I've heard soca artists that they've played me other songs that they've had that were amazing. But they're like, yeah, man, but the crowd not responding to it. I'm like, who cares? That's the job we do. Our job is to give these people what they don't know they want yet. Mm -hmm. So if I was like everybody else and said, oh, I'm just going to give them another party done because let's just keep it going. It works. No. That's not like you being true to yourself. I'm not being true to myself. I'm going to be real and I'm going to do what my heart feels. And my heart right now tells me to put out this mumbo to me. And that's what I'm going to do. And either they're going to get it or they're not going to get it. And, and if I worry about that, then I'm in this for the wrong reason. Where does Soka come into my life? And actually how it started was Diplo gave me a record. Okay. And um, it's, funny that it, it's funny that it was Diplo, but it was him. And he gave me this record that was crazy. It was like this dusty, oh yes, Britney Spears too. Somebody said, shout out Britney. <laughs> Oh, shout out Vaughn, too. Vaughn, just that big of Karen. Energy. What's up, Vaughn? Um, and I just, uh, what was I saying? I totally forgot. Uh, Diplo. I no, yes. No, yes. Yes. <laughs> he gave me the first record, and I was actually pregnant. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I wrote to it in the bedroom. And it was actually a record called TNT. Oh, wow. Um, and my mom said, well, you know, if you could write a record about New York, why you can't write a record about Trinidad? Trinidad. And I was like, Okay, so I sat in my room, and once again, this record came to me, and it was like, All right, we've been drinking since yesterday, partying on the road, and boys in them up in Lavender, them coming down can be old, beating band down on Nelson Street, and you beat them, they won't let go. Juve morning, I'm fetching out, Barataria, yeah, that's my home, was it, was it, was it, oh, Trinidad and Tobago. Hey, 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 nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love that record. Shout out to Christchurch, anybody in Christchurch, um, family in Christchurch. Shout out, shout out to my dad, Ian Franklin. I'm doing Franklin, call him what you want. To my sister, Tamika. I won't blow her up. My sister looks just like me, and one day I'm going to. Hi, sis. I'm your so other sister. So everybody can see. <laughs> so, so Ant, what's what's the next Caribbean project? You know, people love you, people miss you. I remember the first time that song dropped when middle dropped and i was somewhere and somebody was like oh my god angela's back like where was angela i can't believe she's back and people have been so excited to to have you you know back not to say that you're really left but people yeah. just love your personality people love your music people love you so i know that there people are craving to get more from you so can we expect any more caribbean projects coming up um yes um, it's funny how people say that, oh, you know, she bow out or I was like, I, I didn't go nowhere. Who said I exactly. went there? <laughs> you know, 
you know, I, I'm not, I try to tell people that I'm not a soca artist. I'm a global artist. Correct. And I, just, I do, I, I'm a writer that has written for African artists, for German artists, for British artists, for Indian artists. I've worked with people from all over the world. And because of that, and traveling all over the world and writing all over the world, literally for the first 10 years of my writing career, um, I can never just stick to one thing. Mm -hmm. My sound will always have something else mixed in it. Now, right. there was a point that I just was like, no, I didn't want to do anymore because I just felt like the industry was so crabs in a barrel. And I didn't like that. You know, I just felt like, where's the support? Like, where's the love? Like, I, would, I didn't mm -hmm. see that. And I just was like, I didn't really like that. And it kind of just, like, turned me off a little bit, you know? Yeah. And I was just like, it just... I don't know. It just kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit, to be honest. And sometimes you need to take a step back, you know? You do. You kind of need to take a step back to know what what do I want to sing about? What do I want to talk exactly. about? What do, what do I want to do? You know what I mean? And um, that's kind of like just what I was doing. And I have to wait for the music to talk to me, to tell me wh where is it I want to go. But in the meanwhile, while I was doing that, people, and I hate, I don't like, I don't ever say fans. I say supporters. People would come up to me in airports. They'd come from every nation, black, white, Asian, Chinese, do not matter. Please, 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 please put out more music. And I would just be like, oh, my God. I remember being in a party. Actually, it was Ryan Saeed's party. And a woman came up to me and she said, Angela, this is my moment. <laughs> And she was a little inebriated, and that's fine. And her husband was like, oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. I said, leave her alone. This is my moment to tell you that I need more music. And Aww, this that's so me. sweet. She, listen, a, a drunk man speak a sober tongue, so I wasn't mad yeah. at her. And I, and I just remember going, you know, this is not fair to the people who want to hear the music. I can't let the way other people want to go about living their lives affect <laughs> me yeah. bringing joy to people mm -hmm. um and so i have so much music that i didn't put out because i just felt like okay well if we're not going to get supported and we're not going to have the support why should i put this music out mm -hmm. i could stay over here and collect my big checks with my big pop music you know, go and write a couple songs for American Idol, go and write a couple songs for yep. this one and that one, um, drop a couple of trap songs, be popular, and call it a day. But that's not the life I lead, really. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I always fight the hard fight. And my fight was, in the beginning, was to show people, like, yo, these soca artists are worth so much more. You have to support them all mm -hmm. year round. You can't just support them in at one point time of the year and they do support them by coming to the shows going to the carnivals and going to the carnivals but i feel like also the artists need to give them more music so they can support them even more they can't support you mm -hmm. if you don't put out the music and you can't be yeah you can't, can't be seasonal music. you can't just be for barbados carnival or you're just putting out for no. that carnival it, it has, has to, to be, be consistent that. But the problem is, is that people want the instant gratification. Soca artists mm -hmm. are used to everybody learning their record. They know their record. And when they come out, everybody in the studio, everybody is singing their record. That's not real. You have to come out and do a record that no one's ever heard and make them like Make it. them love it. Yeah. Those yeah. are the real artists. I see Marshall. Marshall, one thing I love about him, he's like, this is the record I'm putting out. And I'm going to ride with this record until I can't ride with it no more. Yeah. People put out records and then they go, oh, it's not working. Forget it. Pull it. Yeah. Pull it. Yeah. Go back right to the yeah. record. I'm like, how do you give up so easy? Mm -hmm. That's one thing that we don't do here in America. We don't give up on records. We just keep going. And they will keep push, pushing that record until people start going, you know what? I kind of like this record. Like, you have to I, believe in what you're putting out there because if you don't believe in it, 
nobody else is going to buy into it. Like you have to be 100% confident in the product that you are delivering. Well, I will tell you that I'm, I'm truly grateful to have this platform with you. And I hope you keep doing this and you keep, no matter what, no matter how many people, no matter what, hopefully tonight, one person goes away with a smile and they've forgotten about what's going on today. And maybe they were able to just sit on this live and just not think about what's going on. And I hope yeah. we were able to do that with somebody. Maybe they've learned something new about me, Ryan Saeed, my little brother. Hey, Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> and, and maybe they learned a little bit more about me. And, um, and, you know, you're such a great interviewer and you know how to pull stuff out of people. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for knowing you as a friend and having you as a little sis. You know, I hope that maybe somebody, somebody who, you know, heard this, who really needs to hear this, that you got to know that you're greater than your surroundings, that there's so much more that you can do than what's around you. And you do not have to be a product of your environment. You could be so much greater than your environment. It's not going to happen today and it may not happen tomorrow. It takes a lot of work. But if you truly believe in what you do and what you want to do in life, I promise you, you can get there. If you do not look at me and everything I've been through, it, uh, two hours cannot sit here and tell you everything that I've been through. It's impossible. Right. Um, but just know that every single odd was thrown at me. And everything said and statistically was made for me not to make it. But I overcame that by believing in myself and knowing that I was greater than my surroundings. So... You got to let go of the baggage. You got to let go of the people. If somebody doesn't believe in you, you got to go. Only surround yourself with people who believe in you. Everybody around Amen. me in my life believes in me. And they believe in my dream. And they are supporting what I want to do as much as I support their dreams and what they want to do. If somebody doesn't support you, they got to go. If somebody's trying to say, well, I don't really know. I never seen nobody like you do it. They got to go. Yeah. No, no naysayers, no negatives. Yeah. Your, your surroundings are also a reflection of yourself. Yeah. So if you want to keep those people around you, then you got to know, you got to take a look in the mirror and know that you're just like them. So, you know, have a tight support group around you. Know that your life is so much worth more than a moment of five minutes of fame. Your life is worth so much more than at the moment. I told you, you came in this world and you were wanted by the two people who made you, or even one of those people that made you, you already been gifted life and yeah. you're already special. So to waste it on things that are just a waste of time is just, Idle. <laughs> it's just yeah, it's just wrong. Cause there's so many people yeah. that wish they were wanted when they were born. So, you know, if you could just take anything from this, Yes, it's, it's hard sometimes to dream and it's hard to sometimes see the reality of that dream. But shoot, if it was easy, then we all will have it and we all would do it. Yep. So that's why it's only so many people attain it and so many people have it because it takes the resilience of a bull to be a person just, just filled a tunnel vision that just wants to get to that thing. I just wish that everybody, you know, just be your greater self and just be yourself because I really just got where I am today by just being myself and doing the music that I wanted to do. I never let anybody depict the music that I wanted to do. And I, you know, no one ever told me that I couldn't do. I wanted to write a country song. I wrote a country song. I wanted to write a big pop song. I wanted to go write for American Idol and I wrote for American Idol. I wanted to style clothes for BBD and for Boys to Men and for all these other groups. And I did that. And no one told me that I couldn't do that. And I was really young when I did that. And now at this point in my life, there's so many more things I'm trying to achieve. And I'm never, I'm never going to let somebody tell me what I can and cannot do or what music I should sing or can't sing. Yeah, we, you know, we came up with something. And to me, it wasn't like trying to let everybody know that, oh, I have a song here out, you know. 2020 here it is it was about putting out something that just felt good and if somebody feels good about it then that's just what it is and that's just what i'm always going to continue to do i don't let people pressure me to go hey what are you doing you know like this one coming out and you know you want me to 
to give in to the pressures of social media. And that ain't Angela Hunt. If you want that, go listen to somebody else. Because that yeah. ain't me. I'm always going to do me. And if y'all can leave here today just doing that, being you and doing you, we're going to have so many great people coming out in this world. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Um, and again, thank you guys. We love you. And make sure you follow both myself and Angela at Angela Hunt with an E at the end. And add Cara Donnell. Thank you guys. Thank you. And I'll call you later, baby. Love you. Thank you.